this is the sound of an oscillator. Um, so uh, that's really good. Every time I, I, I play with my synth, that's how I start. That gives me a grounding. I know that the tech, tech works, that the audio um, is coming through to a speaker, to a recorder, uh, so everything works. But we don't stop there. So the next thing I want to do is I really want, um, you know, a different, different notes. So I guess uh, we are doing something that's a bit musical. So what I'll do is I will um, change these notes according to a sequence that's going on. So let's listen to that. So down here I have a sequencer. And that sequencer is running basically uh, through a series of steps. And each of those steps has um, the different pitch. I can also change the, um, the bass voltage. So let's turn them all down just so um, we have a little bit more control. Okay, so uh, this is already a little bit more musical, but I actually would like to have some real uh, notes um, in a scale because I'm not very musical. So what I'll do is instead of going straight into the oscillator, I take the voltage into a quantizer. And the quantizer, it is a bit, little bit like cheating, uh, but what do you do? It's either cheating or 20 years piano lessons. So I just rather do cheating. And in this case, I'm taking the voltage straight into a quantizer, which uh, kind of clamps down the, the pitches to, in this case, a pentatonic minor scale. And there might be people here who, knows, who know what that is. To me, it just sounds great. So let's listen to that. So that is a good first step. So we've got something that's musical, but it's all very um, kind of mushed together. So what I now want to do is I want to separate each of these notes. And to do that, uh, I just take that all out. And I take the sound through a uh, voltage-controlled amplifier uh, called a VCA. And the VCA um, basically uh, doesn't let the sound through at all. As, as you can hear, there's nothing here uh, that sounds. It needs a uh, voltage to open up and close. And the voltage in this case is applied by an envelope. An envelope is a control voltage module that ramps voltage up and then takes it down. So there's an attack stage and a decay stage. And you can control these, but it needs a trigger to start. And the trigger in this case is also coming from my sequencer here. So I'll just patch that in uh, to the gate of the envelope. And what I get now is more separation of the individual notes. And I change, if I change the decay stage, I can change the quality of that separation. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So I have a few really low notes here. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is, I always start with sound design. So in sound design, I wanna shape how that sounds like. And the next thing I can do is to take this through a filter. So let's take that out again. So instead of going from the VCA straight into my mixer, I actually uh, go from a filter to my mixer and I take the output of the VCA into the filter. So let's do that. 
and putting it into a filter, I can change the, uh, the frequencies that are coming through uh, by using something called the cutoff frequency. So now we get a little bit more of a shaped sound. So now I have something that it sounds immediately more musical. And if I change that cutoff frequency over time, I get some, some modulation that makes the sound in itself more interesting. So let's just do that. So I take the control voltage control into a slow moving LFO. And immediately I get some uh, uh, variations in the sound. That make all that a little bit more interesting. Okay, so um, I really at the end, I want to have a complete musical piece. So let's add some drums to all of that. So here I have a drum kit module and I'm just adding uh, a few close hi-hats at the moment. So let's listen to that. It's cool, maybe uh, a bass drum. That's a, it's all very, very fast. Let's slow that down a little bit. So what I have here is a, a clock divider. That clock divider takes a fast moving incoming rhythmic signal and uh, divides that into different rhythms. Right. So next step, I want to do a snare drum and then I'm done with my drum kit. Okay, got the drums. You can have some kind of a interesting kind of lead. Um, so the next thing is I want to add a little bit more variation here. And one of the things that I can do is I can take the output of that filter again and put that into a delay. So let's take the output of the delay into my channel number six. So a delay also has a feedback loop very similar to uh, the video there. Okay, so let's add another voice to the whole thing. Uh, in this case, I'm using another oscillator. 
and I'm taking that into another filter, in this case a WASP filter, which has a bit of character, as you will see very, see very soon. And I take that into another channel in my mixer. And um, I have this one sequencer here, the SQ1, which is an external thing, but I also have a built-in uh, sequencer, and I'm using that now to drive this other voice. And again, I will take the control voltage into my quantizer so that it all plays very nice. And then I will take the output of that into my uh, WASP filter. I have that already, haven't I? Yes, that's all here. So let's turn this on. Ah, the WASP filter actually needs uh, also an envelope to open and close. So we take that uh, second envelope here and put that into the control voltage of the filter. And we will kick that off from a gate on the sequencer. Okay, so we've got a uh, bit of a, a bass. Okay, so another thing is that we can change, we can play with the um, uh, uh, um, the way the sequencer behaves a little bit. Uh, so there's a hidden, kind of a hidden Easter egg control voltage here that if I apply a certain voltage to it by using this uh, attenu attenuator, I can actually change the, the, um, the play direction. So now it's going back and forth or random. Now, one other thing that I love to do with these kinds of voices is to give it a little bit more variation. And in this case, I'm doing something where I use my noise module and I take the noise module into a sample and hold. And the sample and hold takes a trigger and at every trigger it samples the incoming voltage and spits that out until the next trigger. So uh, I do that. Uh, but I also put that into an attenuator because it's, it's the, full, the, the full voltage every single time. I don't really want that. So let's take the output of that into my second. Because this filter has two control voltage inputs. One is being used by the envelope and the other one is open for some other variation. So uh, let's see how that sounds like. So for that, I need another trigger. Trigger the send and hold. And let's see if that works. So this is the typical sample and hold uh, a sound that you can um, probably see. It's pretty random. And we can just dial that in as we like.
Now this uh, um, filter also sounds really nice with a bit of a higher pitched tones. change that a little bit. Uh, so I want to maximize this little system, so I uh, create another voice. This voice is um, the same as the bass sound. taking in a sub oscillator so it's one octave lower and I'll take that straight into my VCA and uh, let's take that VCA output into the mixer and uh, I just need another envelope for that And we kick off that envelope from our uh, multi-mode divider again. This time, here. So let's see what we have. In this case, I'm getting kind of a backwards sound because I've got a very long attack and a sh very short decay. Just adding a little bit of reverb. And this is now a complete patch. So we've got some random stuff going on here. And we can now play around with this stuff.
and that's a complete patch. 